Now, some of you may remember me doing the video Missing 411 on missing people in national parks worldwide. Well, ever since then, I have become obsessed with the phenomenon of missing 411. And I thought that every once in a while, I might want to explore a case or two from uh, missing 411. If you haven't seen that one, you may want to go watch it. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Today, we are going to be exploring the peculiar disappearance of Dennis Martin. Welcome to Peculiar Occurrences. I am your host, Lilith Nova. A Peculiar Occurrence fan? Well, I've opened up a store just for you. So head on over and buy your Peculiar Occurrence gear today. Links are in the description box below. Thank you. On June 14, 1969, Dennis Lloyd Martin and his nine-year-old brother, Douglas, along with his father, Bill, and grandfather, Clyde, met up with some family of theirs that had two small children. They were going camping for Father's Day weekends in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. The Great Smoky Mountains is a mountain range that lines Tennessee and North Carolina in the United States. They are a sub-range of the Appalachian Mountains. The mountains are called the Smoky Mountains and often shortened to the Smokies. Dennis Martin from Knoxville, Tennessee was only six years old at the time of his disappearance. He was wearing a bright red shirt, shorts, and Oxford shoes. He was a quiet boy and wouldn't normally call out, though he would respond to his name, even if it was strangers calling his name. He was part of a special education program at his school and his age was about half of his actual age. The Martin family had set out from the Cades Cove camping ground. They continued on for several more miles in the warm summer weather. They moved along Ledbetter Ridge, above the left side of Anthony Creek, and made their final walk of the day to Russell Field, a grassy field in the forest with panoramic views of the Smoky Mountains. There, the Martins camped out for the night. The next day on June 14th, they took a 90-minute walk to Spence Field. Later in the afternoon while there, the boys started playing a game of hide-and-go-seek. In a very grassy area of Spence Field, they were planning on sneaking up on the adults and scaring them. Douglas and the other two boys went south and then west. Dennis, on the other hand, went northwest towards the Appalachian Trail where he disappeared into the forest behind a bush. Literally, a few minutes later, the boys jumped out of the bush, but Dennis was not there to be seen. His father had been watching Dennis the entire time, watching him disappear behind the bush, never saw him run off from the bush or uh, anyone grab him from behind the bush. About three to five minutes had passed without anyone hearing or spotting Dennis. At that point, his father, Bill Martin, began to call out to Dennis. Bill then followed the Appalachian Trail west before heading back. He then headed west again, but this time he walked all the way back to Russell Field, only to return alone to Spence Field. But no sign at all was found of Dennis. While the boy's father was making this journey, his grandfather, Clyde, had made his way back down to Cades Cove a distance of roughly 8.5 miles. He reached the ranger station there roughly about 8.30 p.m. to summon help from the rangers. At this point, it began to rain very heavily with a nasty storm, which is a common occurrence in these 411 cases in national forests. Bad weather seems to hit these areas and hard 
within hours of people's disappearances, which hampers rescue efforts by washing away valuable evidence. Specialist searchers began looking for dentists within the following days. And Green Barrettes even showed up unexpectedly. But had little to no contact with the core search group. They forced everyone out of the search area and continued to search the area for about a week without telling anybody what they were doing or if they had found anything. And then they left just as mysteriously as they had arrived. To this day, it is assumed that they found nothing. The search group ended up increasing to about 1,400 people. And 1,110 helicopters were flown overhead in the rescue attempts. Bad weather ended up washing away more and more evidence along with all the people tracking up the area where he had been had gone missing. The roads also became far too muddy to travel through there by vehicle. Helicopters began transporting searchers from Cades Cove up to the peak of the mountain, but oftentimes thick fog kept them grounded. Despite all this manpower and two weeks of official searching, along with unofficial searching that lasted until September, nothing was ever found. Not a trace. Sometime later, a family had actually reported hearing the curdling screams of a young boy about three miles away from where he had disappeared. They also reported seeing an unkept wild man in the woods that their youngest son at first had thought was a bear until they realized the man was actually trying to hide from them in the woods and that he had something small that could have been a child over his shoulders. The FBI had determined that this was impossible, that this man would have been too far away from the spot of disappearance at the time. There was no way he could have made it there in the amount of time between the time that they reported seeing it and the time that he had disappeared. They didn't even inform the Martins about this tip until some time later. A shoe print had also been found by one of the searchers who measured the shoe print with a stick and said that it was the size of a small boy's shoe and it was in the shape of an Oxford shoe, the very shoes that Martin had been wearing that day. FBI also dismissed this saying so many searchers in the area had contaminated the area, though none of the searchers had children with them. Several years afterwards, an illegal ginseng hunter ended up coming forward saying that he had found the remains of a small boy, well, a small child, in that vicinity. He said he didn't report it at the time because he was scared of being busted for his illegal activities in the area. However, a search of the area that he reported yielded absolutely no results. A ranger named Dwight McCarter reported that these remains had been reported in an area about three about three to three and a half miles downhill from where Dennis had last been seen. The lead park investigator believed that Dennis got disoriented and perished in the wild. But death could have easily been caused by falling or drowning or animal attack. The family believes that he was abducted because there was a road track near the field. Dwight McCarter was one of the lead trackers straight out of the military on this case. It was also his very first missing persons case that he ended up tracking in the Smoky Mountains. Unfortunately, not his last. Now let's listen to an account from Dwight McCarter himself. That's where, that's where the boy got lost back.
they they have a consideration that that they're they're willing to look at other you know they told me they're willing to look at other explanations but in their heart and soul they 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 believe that a he was stolen on the day of the search about 7 p.m. on the 14th a family from Carthage Tennessee were on the exit side of the loop road a man and his children and they were um, they were trying to photo uh, the deer they were following the deer up Rowan's Creek and and they heard a child scream the father ran up there and he saw a man dart into the woods and he described him as unkempt or un, uh, unclean, unkempt, rough looking. Uh, and they never saw the child though. But if you're a parent, you know a child scream. A group of uh, searchers that were searching the headwaters of West Prong about a mile and a half down on the uh, the old uh, CC Trail, above the CC Trail on the headwaters of West Prong. West Prong is right and under Spence Field on the Tennessee side. They were, they picked up some sign and they were local fellows. And they, uh, I believe what they found, I believe they told the truth. I, I know them personally. They would not lie. They're, uh, uh, they come along and they found a footprint uh, of a little Oxford shoe in the mud. And uh, one of them took a stick and broke it and measured the length of it and the width of the heel. And, uh, and he said it was of a little boy. And the little boy was wearing a Oxford type uh, shoe. That's part of the failure of things is not recognizing reasonable assumptions, you know, about how far someone can travel in a period of time. David Pilates, author of the books Missing 411, reported that Dwight McCarter had told him that a lot of people believe that there are indeed wild men who live off of the grid living up in the Great Smoky Mountains that, and that himself and many others believe that one of these wild men could be responsible for taking Dennis Martin. So what do you think about this peculiar occurrence? What do you think could have happened to Dennis Martin? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to pick up your Peculiar Occurrence merch. You can find the link in the description box below. Now, as always, hit that like button, thumbs me up, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and please hit that bell button so that you know when I upload. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled for all things. Peculiar. Do 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 Yeah. Are you listening? Damn.